Welcome. Perspective is a foundational drawing skill. The more you practice, the better you get. The same is true for the skill of simplification. So let's practice both of them together by turning the person in this photograph into simple building blocks like cylinders and boxes. If you follow along, you need a pencil and an eraser. I recommend a mechanical eraser because it is much more precise than an eraser block like this. If you have tracing paper, that will also come in handy. We will start with the hand. The goal is to make it simple, so we will use a block for the palm and cylinders for the fingers. Throughout the drawing, I'll be asking myself, what is the simplest geometric form that can represent this body part? I pretty much limit myself to simple blocks or cylinders in the whole drawing. I'm going to speed up parts of this demonstration and I will make sure to slow down key moments so you can see what I'm doing in real time. Here I am analyzing the direction of the form. These fingers are going to be cylinders, but I'm starting by establishing a plane in perspective to orient myself. Then I add the fingers. In this drawing I'm also paying close attention to the line quality. I want the lines on the outside of my forms to be thicker and darker than the internal lines. This helps communicate the three-dimensional mass of these forms. Okay, let's work on the arm now. Like the fingers, it will be a cylinder shape. I'm taking a moment to understand the position of the arm in 3D space. The ellipses at the ends of the cylinder are important to show the perspective. Here you can see again that I'm making the outside lines of the arm thicker than the inside lines. I'm also drawing through the form with X-ray vision, and I make sure to keep these see-through lines much lighter. This is really important to keep the drawing easy to understand. To make the drawing process a bit smoother, I'm placing a piece of tracing paper on top of my drawing, so that I can plan out the shapes without messing up my original drawing. If you have tracing paper, you might want to try this as well. Here I'm drawing the cylinder of the upper arm with a center line first and then finding the ellipses. And my tracing paper was sliding around, so I'm fixing it with a bit of masking tape. That should do. Here you can see me thickening up the contour line and erasing the center line of the cylinder. All right, let's do the thigh next. That hand is partly covering the thigh. So right now I'm really happy that I have the tracing paper and I can just draw my cylinder without having to worry about drawing around the hand. Next is the lower leg and there's some really strong foreshortening. At the knee, there's also a lot of stuff going on. There's the hand and there's the thigh cylinder so let's take a moment and do this in real time. First, I'm finding the center line of the lower leg. It should be parallel to the sides of the leg. And here I'm establishing the ellipse of the cylinder at the ankle. We are really looking into that lower leg. So the ellipse here is going to be wide open. All right, the sides are pretty straightforward. But now we're coming up into the area where a lot of elements are overlapping. Choosing the line weights is very important to keep this area of the drawing easy to understand. I want to have a clear hierarchy of line weights. The rule is very simple. If something is in the front, it has a darker and thicker line than an element behind it. If I want my drawing to be easy to understand, I have to establish and maintain these relationships of line weight. These lines are like your voice, in that the clearer you speak, the easier other people can understand what you are saying. Overlaps are another tool for clear communication. Here I actually made a mistake. I drew the cylinders of the upper and lower leg in such a way that they touch or kiss. This is confusing. If you want to communicate form, create a clear overlap with one element in the front and the other in the back. Okay, let's move on to the foot. 
Here I have flipped up the tracing paper and I'm drawing directly on the printout of the photograph. Basically I'm working with two layers and this makes my drawing process a bit smoother than working with all these overlapping forms on just one layer. I am simplifying this foot into one plane for the moment. Next, I draw the stretched out leg. We cannot see where the leg starts, but I estimate it begins around here. And I'm ending the cylinder just before the knee. The ellipses here are very narrow. Let's speed this up again. I think you get the idea. Now I draw the other foot and I start with one plane for the sole of the foot and then I add thickness to it. As before, the outlines are thicker, heavier and darker than the internal lines. On we go to the other arm. I First establish the direction of the forms, then I draw the sides of the cylinder, remove the center line and the side on the ellipse. I'm estimating how much or how little I would see of the ends of the cylinder. If you're struggling with this, I highly recommend you check out the exercises on drawabox.com. Okay. Time to draw the torso, the upper body. We can simplify the whole torso into a big cylinder. I'm sketching it out here to see if it works. But I decided not to use a cylinder and instead to do it with a box. Here's the line connecting the shoulders. Then we come out towards the breasts and then the form is going down again. I am happy with that plan. So I erase the sketch and sharpen my pencil. Okay, let's draw the torso. And I'm still working on the tracing paper at the moment. So this is the big top plane of the chest. Then the front plane. And I'm ending that front plane around here. And you see me struggle for a moment with the direction of that line. It's almost horizontal. And the bottom of the side plane is continuing horizontally. This is bad because it flattens out the perspective. So I realized that and erased the line. Then I redrew it, exaggerating the perspective to make the form easier to understand. So the angle is coming down just a bit and then going up again. This works much better. This is one of those subtle tweaks that will make a big positive impact on how well my drawing communicates form. I have the same opportunity at the top. So let's push the perspective a bit, drawing this block as it would appear seen through a wider angle lens, just to help the viewer understand the form better. Then I establish a thicker outline again to give more weight and solidity to this building block of the torso. The pelvis is next, and here I made a little sketch on the side. I visualize the pelvis as a wedge, a box with tilted sides. Anatomically, there is the great trochanter sticking out at the hips, and then the femur bone going down to the knees. There are some useful points on the pelvis. The acis is the anterior superior iliac spine. And the aces is what I'm trying to find on the photograph in order to place the pelvis. I won't know exactly where it is, but I can make an estimate. Once I have placed these points, I draw the top plane and then the whole pelvis block. There are some overlapping forms in this area, so I have to be strategic about where I place the block and how big I make it. I want all forms to be easily understandable. I finish the pelvis by establishing a thicker contour line. And then we are ready to move up the body to the neck and head. I think the neck here works well as a cylinder. I start with the contours and then estimate the ellipse that connects the torso to the neck. 
Okay, now we can do the head as a round form, like an egg, or we can do it as a block. The perspective is much more understandable as a block. And in this photograph, I think the tilt of the head is quite beautiful. So I'm going with a block. I start with the forehead and the chin, then establish the sides of the head and the top plane. As I draw all these perspective lines, I can really feel how useful the 250 box challenge at drawbox.com has been for me. If you haven't done it, I highly recommend it. All right, I think that is pretty much it for establishing the forms. I'm now going over all of the drawing again to make sure that the hierarchy of line weights is working. The element closest to the viewer is that hand. So I'm making sure that the darkest, thickest lines will be here. And then I'm readjusting all the other lines in my drawing so they work well in relation to that hand. Another way of thinking about this is that I'm balancing out the line weight of all the lines across the image. Oh, and I forgot that hand back there. So I'm adding one block for the palm and another one for the fingers. I'm keeping this hand very simple on purpose because it is very far away from us and has many other things in front of it. And that is the final element. We are done, and here is the final drawing. Now, before you start your own drawing, here are a few things to keep in mind. Number one, use clean lines. Messy lines will make the drawing very confusing. It is also a lazy way of not making clear decisions about perspective. So, use clean lines. Number two, draw through the form. Use X-ray vision. This will make it much easier for you to understand the forms you're drawing in 3D space. Number three, keep your forms simple. The whole purpose of this assignment is to train the skill of simplification. If you make complicated forms, you're not simplifying well, and the drawing will also take much more time. Number four, keep the building blocks symmetrical across the body. Think of a mannequin as you draw. And that's it! I'm looking forward to seeing your drawings where you take a complex subject and simplify it into building blocks.